Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video, don't would you guys hate if I talk like this? On everything that I will retire with the ring and I will retire with the crown. Yes, no, I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. Let's get into my past. Now, the reason why I'm talking about my past is because I just recently got an email that asked to hear a little bit more about me, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm not gonna bash my mom because I love her to death. She is everything to me. But she did have her flaws. And I'm pretty sure everyone has their flaws. I'm pretty sure you too. Mm -hmm. You too. But she did, and she was doing drugs. And from drugs, she was unstable in the meaning of housewives. Um, so she asked my uncle to take care of me for the school year so I could have a steady house, if that makes sense, a steady place to live and go to school. And like an asshole, he decides to lie and basically go to CPS or the courts, I don't know where you go to for this, but and say our mom abandoned me and left me with him. That was not true because she did not ban me. She did the right choice. Instead of dragging me from house to house, from hotel to hotel, she asked him if she could take he could take care of me and he said yes. Now you take that how you want to take that. You could say my mama abandoned me or she didn't, but she did not leave me on his doorstep. So he got full custody of me and I'm pretty sure it was just for the check. I'm sorry, but I think it was. Um, no hate to my um, I was about to say husband. No, he's my uncle's wife. But that's just how I feel. Um, yeah. Anyways, so during the time I was with them, um, I was raised right. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm not gonna bash them and say I wasn't raised right, cause I was. I was a straight A student. I didn't bring nothing home less than a B. I brought home all the awards you could bring home, and I had huge dreams. Anyways, let's get fast forward into it. Every June, while I was with them, I did go to court and do little checkups, as you could say. And I would talk to the judge, and we would be in and out within 15 minutes. Are you okay? Yes, I'm cool. Um, yeah, she's doing good. She's doing good. All right, goodbye. Well, this typical June, um, the last year I was with them, well, you could say the last day I was with them, I had my court. And I believe it was June 7th or June 17th. But I remember it was my court date, and I remember prior to this, something was going wrong inside that house. And I remember saying something and speaking up, but nothing was done properly. And yes, there is mixed emotions on this topic when it comes to me and the other person's side of the story. But I know I wasn't that wrong, and I know I did the right thing. Anyway, so I told my mom because, like I said, my mom was on drugs. And I remember seeing her for days and then not seeing her for six months at times. And it was because of the drugs. And I remember just crying out the window looking for her and looking both ways and wondering when my mom was going to come back. If she was even going to come back. 
Well, anyways, she has straightened up and she got herself back together. She had moved to California, got her a place, and was ready to get me back. I had informed her on what was happening in this household that I was in, which was my aunts and uncles. Yes, you guys just said that. But I had informed her and she had told me to tell the judge. Um, I was scared. I didn't know how I was just going to bluntly say it in front of everybody because this specific court date, my mom did show up to this court date with my aunt that was she was living with, or not living with, but was going to help her get me back, if that makes sense. Like, mom was getting her own place, and this aunt, which is my mom's aunt, so my great aunt was going to help her get me, and if my mom couldn't get me, she was going to get me. But that went wrong too. But anyways, yeah, she was there with my mom's girlfriend. They were three there, ready to go to court and see what was going to happen if she came back. And as far as me, I was with my aunt that was taking care of me and my two cousins, the girls, my aunt's two daughters. And we were there and since I had told my mom what was going on, she had told the judge to, if I could speak to the judge one-on-one -on -one before court started. So about five minutes before court was about to start, we were all getting ready to go in and get ready to be called and see what was gonna happen. I remember the judge coming out and tapping me on the shoulder and asking me to go back there with her. And my aunt did, was not aware of this. My aunt did not know my mom had told anything to the judge. So I went back there, back there and let the judge know what was going on at that house. And she informed me that I would not be going home that day. And I remember crying and asking why I wanted to go home. I wasn't sure on why I was crying and so scared I was going home because I knew what was going on in that house, but I was still young and I didn't know where I was going to be going. I didn't want to go to a stranger's, so I didn't know what was going to happen because I knew I wasn't going to my mom at this specific time. So a caseworker came and he walked me to the back and he tried to cheer me up by making me laugh. and. Just telling me everything was going to be okay. And during this time, as I was walking back with him to another room, court has started. Yes, they did still have court, and court has started. And they did let my aunt know that she, I would not be going home. And I am not sure what happened in that courtroom. But as far as I know, they let her know. And they told my mom what was going to happen and what my mom needed to do in order to get me back. She had about a year to do this, all these things. And so I remember talking to the social worker and telling him what happened and um so they took me to like child haven i'm not sure that's what it was called in vegas it's where like they keep the kids that don't have a home basically like foster kids um cps i'm sure but this is i went into the room where i was getting the foster parent this day i wasn't gonna stay i was getting a foster parent this day so i went in the room like the holding room and there's toys, there's clothes, there's everything. And I remember going in there crying. I remember just crying and crying because I was so scared. But there was other kids there, so I was able to at least get my mind off it for a little bit. But once the kids started going to their foster homes, I was still there. Because my foster mom didn't get off of work. Or she was, like, working, but, like, in school, too. She didn't get off of work for, like, long time ago. And I remember after like all the kids left, I started getting sad and missing my mom and missing my aunt and just wanted to go home and I was just so scared. So they took, I took a shower and they let me pick out an outfit and I put it on and that was like the favorite part. I was able to like pick out my own outfit. But anyways, um, I remember them saying, okay, your foster mom's home after they like braided my hair and everything. And I walked up, they walked me up to like the front office and I remember seeing her. And she looked so mean. But let me tell you, let me get into it. Anyway, she said hi, she asked me my name, she told me her name. I'm not gonna say her name for reasons why I don't know if she wants me to say her name. But I'm not gonna say her name. Um, she, we, she signed the paper and yeah, we went into the car. She was telling me about herself and let me know that there were other foster kids. There was two babies, um, a six-month-old and a three-year-old, or not a three-year-old, about a one-year-old, a six-month-old and about a one-year-old. And there was another little girl that was eight years old. And then she had two of her own biological daughters. And I believe it was like 15 and 16. 
and she'll call me their names and let me know and then she has stopped at Del Taco and she was getting something for Angel Face and that was what she called one of them her two biological daughters I'm gonna name them by their nicknames like she called them the 16 year old was Angel Face and the 15 year old was Diva so she was letting me know and she called it she called Angel Face and let her know that she was on her way. So I remember getting there and I remember Diva coming out as soon as I got out of the car. And let me tell you, I'm not one of the friendly types. Um, I'm not one. If I don't know you, I'm just going to... Um, basically, I don't know you. I don't like you. I don't know. And I remember that's how like kind of she was like kind of looked like she was stuck up. And... Um, I remember her looking at me and me looking at her and I remember her like kind of like uh and so I just like like because I was young and she was already like 15 years old but I remember her asking to go to the movies or something like that and she, her mom said no so she went into the house pouting sorry if you're watching this but um so then I remember walking into the living room and Angel Face was sitting on the couch and she was just like hi she was so sweet and I remember just her telling me her birthday and me telling me my birthday and she was like, oh my goodness, it's so close to mine and I'm January too and we just had a good time. And I remember going upstairs and meeting the eight-year-old. They woke her up because it was late. Like I said, it was like almost 11 o'clock at the time I was getting home. And then I remember meeting the baby. But from that day, it was amazing. I loved that house so much. I got so close to Angel Face. She was like the one where... If I ever needed someone to talk to, she was there. And if I ever wanted to have fun and just laugh, there was Diva. Like, I fell in love with them. Like, I considered them my sister. Like, it was just amazing. And the as far as the eight-year-old, we fought like crazy. But I loved her. I loved her like a little sister. But we fought like crazy. And the babies. Now, I love those babies to death. I remember I would just watch them. Like, they were my own. Um, it was just... I just love them and I remember they got back went back with their mom and it was the hardest thing for me to ever do was say goodbye I, the eight-year-old was getting moved to and um, because it was time to where she was about to get adopted out and it was if my foster mom was going to a doctor or if not she was gonna be moving to a home where she was gonna get adopted and I remember my foster mom telling me that if she was going to adopt anyone, she was going to adopt me. So the year was placed out and I remember saying goodbye to her and it was hard. I missed her. I remember another two little pair. There was a six-year-old and a three-year-old. And the six-year-old was kind of, I would say, she wasn't kind of, she was disabled. She um, didn't walk, she didn't talk, she wore pampers still. Um, she took her diaper off and she was just, I loved her though, like everyone was kind of like scared to touch her because of those things, but I loved her, like, I just remember we had upstairs and I would just carry her, like, mind you, I'm nine years old, I'm little, and this little girl was chubby, and I would just carry her and I would change her diaper and then I would put her in her bed and she was just, I loved her too. And some way somehow they decided to say my foster mom was a bad mom a bad foster parent because she would put her pajamas on backwards but because the little girl would unzip her pajama with switch footsie and she would eat at her diaper rather it was clean rather it was dirty she would eat at her diaper and no she would not sit in her poop and her pee no she wouldn't because i would clean it or my foster mom was clean um, my foster mom was an amazing foster mom so i'm just saying that she was amazing so the caseworker came and they were like, well, we're going to remove these kids. And they were trying to remove me too. And I let them know, like, we're not taking me. I'm not leaving. I'm sorry, but I'm not leaving. And so they couldn't force me out the house. Like, they didn't force me out the house because she didn't do nothing wrong. I don't think she did nothing wrong. So I had to say goodbye to them. And that was hard too because, like I said, I got close with them. And it was just me. My foster mom did not get no more foster kids. At this time, it was just me. And... It was getting close to our court date, which was going to determine if I was going to be able to go back to my mom or if I was going to be able to get adopted out. The only one that went to the court was me and Diva, and that was because my foster mom had to work and so did Angel Face. So they had to work, and I remember going to court that day, and Diva was sitting in like the audience part, and I was in the front, and 
it was so quick. Like we want Alexis to be able to go with her mom and wait and like um, update with her within six months. And if everything goes good, then she can stay with her mom. And I remember it was just as soon as they introduced herself and let them know what they were wanting from the judge. The judge I looked at me and said, "Is this what you want?" And of course, I said yes. And he said, "Okay, that's it. Send her with her mom." And I remember looking back and Diva was in tears and I just broke down. But I knew they were happy for me. Um, I remember calling my mom as we were walking out and telling my mom, I can't go. And she was like, really? They said, no, no. I just remember smiling, so big and like, I'm just kidding. I get to go home, but I have to go home. It was like a Tuesday of court and I, Friday was the last day of sixth grade for me. So it was summer and I remember saying after Friday, I'm going to be on my way back to California, which my mom was in California and I live in Vegas. Um, the, kid, the day I was leaving, saying goodbye to everybody and just crying and crying and it was, I cried all the way from when I left to get into the Greyhound for about two weeks straight, I cried. Not because I was mad, not because I was like oh i wish i never left but because i i miss them um i grew to love them and i still love them like, i still have communication with them not as much as i would like but i do know that they're doing their life they're grown now the girls are grown now obviously and my foster mom is doing her thing but hey guys if you guys watch this um but yeah anyway so i got back with my mom and I've been with my mom ever since. Um, I did try to get out of hand, and I think I did get out of hand, and I'm sorry, mom, but I don't know what got into me, but she she did her thing, and she, she got me back. It took about five years, but she got me back, and I'm saying my mom, she did it. And I thank my mom for doing that because I feel like my mom fought for me, and yes, I did have a grudge over my mom and I think that's why I acted out when I got back with my mom because of that grudge um but yeah so I got back with my mom when I was almost 11 years old and turning 11 years old and then that's when I met my oldest father seventh beginning of seventh grade year so I got my mom in June and I met my oldest father around August, but I didn't get officially with him until November of the same year, 2008. But yeah, that's my story. And if you guys would like to know more from meeting my oldest father to what happened to now, on how I am now and how far I've gotten since everything that's happened, then just let me know and if you guys have any questions like I said email me at this email it's gonna be right here and also in the description box email me all the questions you guys have um, I'll be more than happy to do a Q&A for you guys if it's a more serious topics if it's more of just curious questions if it's more of whatever you guys have I'm more than happy to do a Q&A for you guys but yeah thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.